keeps saying my stream help. It says encoding overloaded. Consider turning down video settings. What the fuck? And now it went away. Get down, cat. Not in the mood. So, plan is, uh, somebody in a kind of comments, like, rudely was stating that I never answer fucking questions in my streams anymore, which is nonsense. So I figured I'd just dedicate an entire stream here, at least for a little while, just answering fucking questions and chilling out. I don't think I've ever done a stream like this before. Do I put pineapple on my pizza? No, and if I ever see somebody do it, it's going to be the last thing they ever do. Fuck is up with that shit, dude. It's disgusting. I've tried it before, and it's just... Mm, I don't get it. Nothing that sweet should ever be on fucking pizza, dude. I'm the same way with, like, barbecue sauce. Like, really sweet barbecue sauce people put on. Like, <coughs> fucking nasty, dude. How's it going, Rob? Whatever happened to Jackie Brown, fan? I talked to him the other day. He's a good dude, man, for sure. We were talking about... Uh, Fucking Back to the Future 3. He was getting ready to watch the trilogy. I was like, oh, good luck, dude. This Crisis 1 through 3 is better than Halo. That's pretty much just a cold hard fact. I would say Crisis 2 is my favorite, though. Crisis 3 is just a weird game. Crisis 3 feels unfinished. Like, I feel like Crisis 3 needed, like, four or five more hours on the end of it. It just felt like it just... Not finished, man. It's weird. Crisis is one of those games, dude, I couldn't even play for the longest time. They don't make games like Crisis anymore that nobody can run. I don't even think the developers themselves could run Crisis at the fucking highest specs when they released that game. I used to work at this uh, place called Systemax. They're not around anymore, at least not where I live. I think it was just a one-thing deal that they made computers... And I worked in the uh, selling area, so I worked in a cubicle, and I sold, like, technology to, like, schools and shit. But when I first got there, they gave us uh, a tour around the factory where they made the computers because they made computers there. And I really wanted to work in the factory where they made the computers. I really didn't have any fucking interest in working on the phones and shit. But that's where I ended up. So they gave me a tour of the factory, and then they test the computers. They were testing the computers using Crisis, so they had, like... Rows and rows of computers all set up in this factory in the back, and they were all being tested with Crisis on, like, medium to high settings and shit. It was fucking goofy. But I ended up quitting that job because it was just, you felt like a telemarketer. Dude, all I did all fucking day, sit around fucking calling people and trying to sell shit. It's fucking stupid. How's life? Good, good times, man. I'm enjoying myself lately. Fear is doing good. Uh, it's still not perfect. It's got a little bit of a coolant leak. Like, see, on on the Fiero, the Fiero has a unique cooling system. No other car has this cooling system. Okay, so you have the radiator in the front, cooling pipes on the side of the car that are made of steel, leading to the back of the engine, where the where, in the back where the engine is, but the engine sits higher to, than the radiator. So it has to be a very closed system with like no air going through it in order for this coolant to, to loop around the car and it has to actually go elevated so you need pressure in this fucking thing and when i was talking about this before somebody was trying to act like i didn't know what i was talking about like when i was burping the fear you gotta burp this motherfucker like a goddamn baby to get the air out of it because if you have air pockets it'll overheat you, the coolant won't get to the car and uh on the driver's side it's it's seeping just a little teeny micro amount of fucking coolant you can see it like if you run the car for a long time like the guy welded the pipe and I see where he welded it, but there's just like a little pinhole in it. So it's seeping just the slightest bit of coolant. So it's not enough to really worry about. Uh, I just add it every now and then. It's not a big deal. Those pipes are expensive. And it's just, I, don't, I just don't know if I want to buy another pipe for it. So I'm just kind of playing it by ear with that shit. Favorite memory from Silent Rob Golden Age 2007 to 2014. It'd have to be two memories that I really look back on pretty fondly is uh, when I made when I made Action 52 and 
because at that time, you know, I was making these videos and they weren't really going anywhere. And, you know, at this time, like, I wasn't really doing anything with my life. You know, I wasn't going to college. I wasn't really doing anything. I wasn't working. And I was spending all my time on these YouTube vids and I wasn't going anywhere. I, was, I wasn't even getting, you know, a couple hundred views on my videos and shit. And really, it was, this was the last shot. You know what I mean? I had like one more idea. I put like really all my effort into this Action 52 and it, it worked, you know, kind of, it took off. I mean, it wasn't viral or anything, but it was popular. You know what I mean? Like 10,000 views in a, in a few days and shit kind of popular. And I remember like people from the community coming to this video and like commenting on it. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was fucking crazy. And the big thing is, is when our mate commented on it, our mate laid a comment down on it and really liked it and that was just fucking nuts i remember just screaming and like just running around my room calling up my fucking homie and telling him about it and it was big and then that was the first thing that was that i knew that i you know was at least had some talent and then after that is when boo kitty saw it and we started talking so i fucked her because of that video so Action 52 is always going to have like a really good place in my heart because I wouldn't be here right now without that game, really. So that was really cool that that happened. Can we see your tattoo? Yeah, you can see my tattoo, dude. There's that shit right there. You flag because of nudity here. Hell yeah. You guys don't even want to see where the fucking Mega Buster is. I'll give you a hint. It's on my dick. Okay. Yeah, it turned out really good. These blue parts were fucking painful, dude. Like, don't let anybody tell you tattoos don't hurt because they're fucking just trying to act tough and shit. It fucking hurt. Like, when this was done, like, it looked like a fucking bloody massacre, dude. It looked like my arm was, like, on its period. It was crazy. But, I'm just glad that I'm not really a one-hit wonder. It's kind of my whole thing. When I made that Action 52 vid, my biggest thing was, like, becoming a one-hit wonder and just never getting anything else. You know, because everything I made after that, it never really went anywhere as far as that. I still I had a fan base now, but it, it was, wasn't was hitting like that video. But then I had the GameStop rant, which hit arguably even more than the Action 52. And then here lately, I've had a lot of hits and video, uh, videos and shit like that. But <laughs> yeah, this video, this shirt, dude, my wife got me this. It has this whole rant from Christmas Vacation on it. I wear it year-round. This is Banks right heel. Say hi, Banksies. Banksies. What's up, bitches? It's all around Ken. Me, me, me. <laughs> he's sweet, but he's in uh, run around in circles mode right now. He always wakes me up in the mornings to cuddle and shit. I always got like a, I got like a thing with, with black cats, dude. Black cats are always my jam. Uh, he's better than Jack Burton. <laughs> I'll just tell you guys straight up, like, this is a better cat than Jack Burton for sure. So, like, he actually wants attention. Jack Burton never really wanted attention. Yeah, this is Banks. I named him after Hocus Pocus. My wife loves that movie. Alpha's gone again. Is Alpha gone again? I haven't been keeping up on that fool. Let me go to his page real quick. Yeah, dude, look. <laughs> yeah, he made two videos. He made two videos. And he hasn't made another one in three months. Dude, I'm going to tell you guys right now what that is. The whole deal with that is that he just wasn't making no money anymore. Dude. He's not making no money off these, off these videos anymore. The last video he made, he got 94,000 views, and I'm going to click on it. Yeah, it's not, there's no ads on it. So he's not getting any money. Let me go to the other one. Nope, no ads. So he's not, he's not getting no money off these anymore. So he just doesn't want to do it. That's literally it. What's my thoughts on Shenmue 3? Honestly, dude, I, I just think that it just looks bad. And I'm not saying this because... I don't like the series. Like, if this game looked good, I'd be like, this might be the one. You know what I mean? Like, this might be the one. Like, you know, 
you get your you, you get your dick sucked like five times in a row and four of them bitches fucking scrape it with their teeth and you just hope that the fifth one don't. Eventually you're gonna find a bitch that don't fucking scrape that shit with their teeth. But I think Shenmue 3 is gonna take a chunk out with its teeth, dude. It looks jank. Yakuza is better in every capacity, guys. Like, I mean, it's just one of those things where it's just like the storyline in this in these games is just not that interesting for everybody to be like at the edge of their seats for fucking like 15 years waiting for this fucking sequel. It's just not like that, dude. Yakuza 0 has a better storyline than any of these Shinmu games put together. Like, Shinmu had its time. When it first came out, it was an interesting thing. Like, there wasn't anything like that game. There really still isn't with the kind of the way... I mean, Yakuza is, but it's better. But the way that Shinmu is so fucking chill and just nothing to it, there's nothing really like that. There's just nothing to that game, dude. And, like, with this new one, like, the camera looks so close to fucking Ryu. And it just looks... I don't know, man. It, it, it looks like a fucking late Xbox 360 game. Late to mid Xbox 360 game. What's your opinion on Nine Inch Nails? I like Nine Inch Nails. Uh, the Fragile is one of my favorite albums. Do you ever miss the Cutlass Supreme? I do. I do. I regret trading that car for what I did. I traded the Cutlass Supreme for a Cadillac. For an 88 Cadillac uh, Fleetwood, which I regretted. That whole thing was just a catastrophe. So I had a Firebird. It was a 91 Firebird. It was like a teal color. And uh, it was a mess. Um, that fucking thing, like, the, the steering was just... Dude, like, to, to go straight, you had to, like, have the wheel, like, turned twice. Like, the fucking alignment or something was fucked up. Nobody could figure it out. And uh, I put it on there to trade, and this weird fucking fat hillbilly guy fucking contacted me with the uh, Cutlass. And my parents didn't want me to trade it, because it was like, the, the Firebird was the car they bought me as like a present and shit. But it was just a mess. It was falling apart. And uh, they finally let me trade it. So I traded this guy, this Firebird. I, I was surprised he even wanted it. And uh, I traded the Firebird on Craigslist for the Cutlass Supreme. And it was, it was a nice, it was a nice car. It was in really nice condition. Um, but it leaked oil. It leaked oil pretty bad. And it was in really good condition. But the problem with that car, and the main reason I got rid of it, is that it was just beyond a gas guzzler. Like, dear fucking God, guys. Like, I can't even tell you. Like, I understand it was a different era and different time in the early 80s with, like, gas and shit. But... Fucking Christ, guys. I mean, this car probably got like three miles to the gallon. I mean, it was carbureted. It was a fucking big-ass engine. Big-ass fucking tires on. It was a big car. It was fast, but fucking Christ, dude. Like, I mean, you could dump 20 bucks in that tank, and it would be gone. Like, you'd get across town. And it, it was almost like it had a gas leak, but no, it was just fucking a gas hog. So I had to get rid of it. And my idiot ass trades it for an 88 Fleetwood Cadillac that's probably even worse on gas. So I trade it for that to this, like, gangster white guy, like, you know, pretend gangster guy. He's a fucking total asshole. And I trade trade it, and on the way home, the car acts like it's acting up and shit. And the uh, windows didn't roll down, and the fucking damn muffler was hanging off of it and shit. And I got all that fixed. And this guy fucking messages me, like, two weeks after the trade. And he's like, he's like, I want to trade back, man. He's like, this Cutlass fucking is a gas guzzler, man. I can't even believe this. And I'm just like, dude, this Fleetwood ain't much better. I'm not trading you back. I just put a whole bunch of money into fixing the fucking shit that was wrong with it. And he's like, he's like, you better watch your back, man. Because I'm going to be hiding in the bushes. I'm going to gank your ass and all that shit threatening me and whatnot. I mean, he wouldn't stop. I mean, this dude was, like, calling me, like, literally threatening to fucking kill me. And uh, I actually ended up having to go and make a police report about it because he wouldn't stop. I mean, this dude knew where I lived because we, we had talked about meeting up at my house. So he knew where I lived. So I literally had to go to the police station. It was the only police report I ever make, made so far in my life. I had to go and make a police report about it. And the cop was just mystified. It would, no, the guy looked like Jesse Pinkman, dude. Like, he literally did. He was like a total wannabe gangster. And I had to go to the police station... And the cop was just mystified as to the whole thing. He's like, you traded cars? He's like, why would you trade cars? I was like, 
thinking it's like a Pokemon card deal or something. And, uh, no, I'm, I made a fucking police report, and the police called him a couple times. He never answered, I guess, but he's smart enough to realize that a police station's calling him to stop, so he never contacted me again after that. But I probably would have traded him back if he wasn't an asshole about it, because I actually kind of wanted the Cutlass back. Um, but he was a total dick about it, dude. So then I sold the Fleetwood Cadillac, which was a catastrophe. Because as I was selling it, I started it up and waited for the guy. The guy got there, and it sprung a fucking coolant leak right there in the driveway as the guy was going to buy it. So I didn't get as much for it. He just went ahead and bought it, but he was all pissed off. And then I bought a 94 Firebird manual after that. And then after that, that was a good car. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that car. Firebirds have been good cars for me. And then after that, I got my MR2. MR2 had a wretched, wretched fucking oil leak. So then I got my G5 after that. So I've had a lot of cars, bitches. Before that, I had, an, I had a Honda Accord. That was a piece of shit. And then I had a, my, one of my first cars was a Cavalier, like a 91 Cavalier. It was a fucking, it smelled like cat anuses <laughs> you're bantering with me and my wife yeah me and my wife uh, we have good banter she's great I mean I, I can't ask for much else in a wife she treats me really good which is not something I can say with a lot of girls that I've been with that's for sure what? <laughs> dude I don't follow Wings of Redemption dude Guy's a fucking idiot. It's his own fault as to why he's in the position that he's in. All Wings of Redemption had to do was play it cool. You know what I mean? Okay. This is something, you know, this is something I'll tell you guys straight up. No matter how good you think you are at something, there's a 99% chance, a 99.999% chance that there's somebody out there that's better than you at that thing, okay? And the problem with Wings of Redemption is he met that person that was better than him, okay? Because he was the best in his mind and according to a lot of people. But Wings of Redemption met that person, okay, the, the, the yin to his yang, that beat his ass in front of everyone, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, it's the same thing as, like, a tough guy who thinks he's tough and he gets his ass beat in front of all of his friends. That's what happened to Wings of Redemption. And it's it's affected him on like a deep, deep level to where he was never able to recover. It's the same thing as um, Cosmo. Cosmo, that speedrunner, why he's a fucked up mess now is because he was the best. You know what I mean? Like Cosmo was the top of the mountain, or so we thought. And he's the best at Zelda. He's the best, okay? He goes to the video game championships, gets his ass beat by fucking John Numbers in front of everybody, humiliates that motherfucker so hard that it turned him into a fucking female, okay? And he fucking knocked his ass, his brain all fucked up, okay? And fucking turned his ass into a girl he got beat so bad, okay? So that's what happened to fucking Cosmo and the why he's... uh. Well, yeah, like he's like trans now, and he, he goes by uh, Narcissa. <laughs> <laughs> fucking crazy person, dude. Knocked his, beat his ass so hard, his fucking dick flew off. Dude, he's a female now. Like, that's what happened to Cosmo, dude. Like, some people can't handle the fact that there are people out there that are better than them at something. Okay, they have to be the best. And it's just not true. I, I, I'm well aware of the fact that there are people out there that are better than me in everything I do. You just have to find your, your niche. And there's nothing wrong with being good at something. You don't got to be the best. That's how, you got, that's how you get through life. You know, if you, if, you, if you think you're the best and then you get your ass fucking mutilated in front of everybody, you know, like it's, it's hard for a lot of people to handle. They can't fucking take it, dude. Everybody had that friend growing up that used to play multiplayer games with that could not fucking handle being beaten. I, I knew this one guy, dude, like, 
would get so fucking upset, dude, when he would fucking lose in a multiplayer game. Halo, Mario Kart, dude. I mean, this motherfucker, dude, he, he broke one of my controllers one time. I mean, it was like a fucking huge argument. I had forced that motherfucker to buy me a new controller because he broke my fucking shit. Came over to my house. I beat his ass ruthlessly in the first Halo. I'll never forget this. He fucking picks up. It was the Duke. Duke controllers. I didn't use that one. I let other people use the Duke. Because I got small ass hands, if you guys can't tell. Like, I got tiny fucking womanly hands. I got a big dick, big feet, tiny ladylike hands. So I couldn't use the fucking Duke. He's using the Duke and fucking gets up and slams that motherfucker on the ground, makes a pothole, basically, in my goddamn fucking room, breaks it. Just couldn't handle being beaten, dude. I stopped hanging out with him because of that. I couldn't do I couldn't handle it anymore. So I couldn't. Dude, the Duke was just like, dude, it was, it, it was like this to me. Like, this is, this is like a fucking, <laughs> this is like a, where you put your laptop on, like, on your lap and shit. This is what the Duke feels like to me, okay? Who the fuck wants to play with something like this, dude? It's like, a, as big as a TV tray. Like, I can't do it. Like, I get it. Some people have big fucking hands. But I, I can't, I can't rock the Duke. It's too fucking big, dude. I can barely even reach the damn sticks, dude. I'm just like, Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Like, for me, um, let me grab it here. For me, I'm all about the the PS4 controller here. The PS4 controller is just perfection. You know what I mean? It's all cords all tangled up. But this is this is as good as it gets right here. Like, it's so comfortable. Everything is within fingers width. You know, it's right there. You know, like I love it. I put it on my butt. I just cannot handle these these big ass controllers. I can't handle the Duke. Yeah, I saw they remade the Duke for the Expo, and I mean, some people got big hands. Like, I mean, I, I've seen it. Like, I have friends who their hands are like, like, here's my hands, and their fingers are like this much bigger than mine, dude. It's fucking insanity. So, <laughs> what drugs have you done? That's a whole different stream, my friend. I don't have enough time to in this stream. <laughs> That's a whole different stream, my friend. I have my party days, and they're behind me, let's just say that. Would you buy a hacked PS2 loaded with games? Eh. Dude, I'm just, like, not the biggest PS2 fan. The PS2 is a great console. Okay, one of the best. When it came out, it had a DVD player in it. It was amazing. It was, like, my first DVD player. I had the system. I had these games. Final Fantasy X, like, all this stuff. It was great. But the PS2 to me represents an era where I was going out of video games, okay? Around the time I got that is when I started to get into music really hardcore. So I was, I have deeper connections with all the other PlayStations, okay? So PS1 is where I really was, like, coming into my own with games, you know what I mean? I was finding what I wanted, like Resident Evil, um, fucking Metal Gear Solid. It was just a dream come true with the PS1. PS3 is where I started my YouTube page, you know, so I have a deep connection with PS3 because, like, that was, like, most of my shit was, you know, ranting about PS3, talking about PS3, you know, that's where I really got back into games hardcore. PS4 is amazing. It's where I've streamed so much with you guys. I've really came into my own being a streamer on the PS4, and uh, it was great. Chad Ward area with PS3. But PS2, I don't have that connection. You know, like I said, PS2 came out, my brothers were playing it a lot, but I had an Xbox. So I played Halo and stuff with my friends. My friends would come over all the time. That was, that was at that point. And when we did play games, we played Halo. You know, we played a lot of the first Halo. PS1 is where it's at. I got my PS1 games right over here, actually. Ah, smells like 1998, dude. This is my childhood. Uh, this is this game. I remember this game the most because my friend at the time was like telling me about it, and he was so psyched he would rent it all the time. And I didn't even like I rented it once and played it just enough to where I knew I wanted it. But he used to rent this game all the time. He told me about it, and like I remember I wanted it for Christmas, and I got it for Christmas, and he was he was gonna get it too. I called him up. I'm like, dude, I got it. Look, you saw it. I'm just like rubbing it on my nipples and shit, and he's just like, I didn't get it, man. They didn't get it for me, and I was just like, that sucks, bro. 
You know what I mean? Like, I was so hateful towards my friends back then. I'm surprised anybody ever wanted to hang out with me. Has your, all your opinion changed of PC gaming since PUBG? I just... I like... I, it's not that I don't like PC gaming. It's just that I didn't grow up with it, and I just don't have that attachment to it like a lot of people do. Like, I had a PC growing up. I, I, had, a, I had a Macintosh first. Okay, so I had an Apple computer. It didn't play a lot of games, but I have my fondest memories of playing games was on that. It had the weird games. I had like this game called Lenny Circus, and I had uh, Doctor Quandary's I uh, Secret Island Doctor Quandary, and some of these weird adventure type games that were on that. Then we got Windows ninety five computer, and it was just junk, dude. Like we had constant problems with it all the time. A lot of the games didn't work right on it. it just it was underpowered. Then we had this Windows Vista computer that was a pit pile of shit, and I just had such problems fucking getting games to work half the time, dude. It was just horrendous. By the time, you know, I really was, you know, getting a computer that could do anything, I just didn't care anymore. And the way I am now, like, I just don't care for a game to be the best resolution. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care about that. I don't care that a game is fucking running at 8K at 5,000 frames. I don't care. Because when I'm playing a game, I'm not focusing on that. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, when you're going to have sex with a hot-ass bitch, okay? And she pops some titties out. And you're like, whoa! And you're surprised at first, and it's great, okay? But you're, you're going to be wanting to suck on them titties. You need substance. You know what I mean? You don't just want to look at them and be, like, ogling them and be like, whoa, that's amazing. No, you want... You know, that's the way I am with games. Like, I start focusing on the game. It, it just bleeds into each other like, after a while. Like... After a while, I don't notice the graphics. I'm playing the game. I'm focusing on that. Yeah, I can get the game cheaper on, on PC. I get that. Okay? But I don't feel like I own anything when I buy something on Steam. Like, I have... When I buy a game, okay, there's... there's I, I have to have, like, a sort of an... It's hard to explain, like, I guess an emotional attachment to it. Okay? It has to feel at least a little bit like it did when I was a kid, okay? I, I, I guess I'm trying to recapture that feeling again. I want something to hold on to. I like to display it. I like to hold it. There are certain times that Ani will tell you, I will just go over and look at my games, pick them up, check them out. I'll do it with my PS1 games all the time. On Steam, I don't feel like I own anything. It literally just looks like a list on my screen. I have no emotional attachment to any of these games. Okay, like people will give me games on Steam, and I and it's really nice, and I appreciate people to do that, and you can still do that, and that's great. But to me, it's just one more word added onto a list. I don't feel like I own it, and to a point, you kind of don't on Steam. You know, like you you need Steam. You know what I mean? It's like you you're like hooked up to this fucking life support system in order to live, and that life support system is Steam. And if that life support system is ever cut off, you're going to die. You know, and it's just like, I get it, maybe GOG. I, I appreciate GOG a little bit more. At least I get, you know, you get the file. You get like maybe an instruction manual or something with it that's digital and stuff like that. And it's, it's I need more than just, uh, just an icon on a screen in order to be invested in it. I guess you could say maybe I'm just kind of growing out of this kind of stuff. But in order for me to continue doing it, I need these certain things. If I don't have this, I have no interest. Like, I, literally, my innocence is gone. I guess you could say that. Like, you, I, I could buy it, like, literally. Literally. Like, if, if Final Fantasy VII, you know, like, if it was on Steam, if it was on Steam, okay, and somebody purchased the digital deluxe super ultra extra special that comes with a dildo and a fucking helmet, okay, and, like, all this fucking shit backpack edition, okay, and, but it's digital, you know what I mean, it's, I don't have it, it's just there, you know what I mean, like, it's just like, it's like a hundred dollars, you buy, you pay a hundred dollars, and you just get an icon on a screen that you just click, like, I just, I just don't have any attachment to that kind of stuff, one more person, guys, can we get the 200, give me that 200, get it to me, give it to me, 199 people, I know, kitty, won't you get on your computer and log on and get this up to 200? Come on, I want one more person. <laughs> Give it to me. We got 203? 
Oh, 200 jokes. Yeah, bitches! <laughs> Fuck yeah. 202. That's amazing. Man. That's really surprising that I got this many people just hearing me talk. That's really cool. I ever play Catherine? I tried playing it, dude, but I am just not a puzzle game guy at all. Like, I have a hard time focusing on puzzle games. Do I like Mega Man 4 now? I actually kind of do. My opinion on Mega Man 4 has kind of changed over the years. Mega Man 4 is like that. It's like the black sheep. You know what I mean? It, it, it tried to go a little darker with its, you know, graphic style. It tried to do different... I think the main thing that really gets me with, with Mega Man 4 is the, the music quality. The, the music quality is just not as good as 3 or 2. The instruments used in it, like everything, it's just not as good. No, I never finished Persona 5. What are you doing? I'm over here losing. He thinks I'm losing my mind because I'm talking to myself. He's sitting over here like, huh? What? What are you doing? What are you doing? You're ridiculous. You see a bug on the carpet, don't you? He was attacking a bug earlier. Yeah, I love black cats too. He's the sweetest cat. He's just got the he's got some bug and I see and you can see on his face, man, he's got a bug in his sights. Ninety hours. Dude, that's the thing. That's the fucking thing, bro. I got no time in my life for ninety hour games anymore. I just don't. I just don't. I've tried. Like, I like long games. I do. But I'm married. Okay? I gotta spend time with my wife. We gotta do things together. I can't just sit there and play a 90-hour game. Okay? Those that are married in this room right now, you guys know what I'm talking about. A wife is only gonna take so much of that shit. When I was playing Red Dead Redemption 2, I mean, she was sick of it. By that point. Like, I literally put, like, 60 to 70 hours into Red Dead Redemption 2. And she was over it. Okay? Like, she was pissed. I would turn that motherfucker on. She's like, oh, here we go. You're gonna be fucking on that shit for four or five hours. And that's, that's the last game that I really put that much time into. Because, I mean, she just gets pissed off. I mean, you can't do that when you're married, dude. You know, very rarely. 10 to 15. That's it. That's it. That's it, Bray Max. 15 to 20 hour games are like my max anymore, okay? Yeah, I got this Dragon Quest 11, and yeah, I probably will never beat it. I got Dragon Quest fucking 7 on the 3DS, dude, that I'm 85 hours into this bitch, and it's still not over, okay? That game went way off the fucking deep end, dude. Like, it is way too long. I'm at the very end of it, and now I have to go and find... Some bullshit or secret fragments or some bullshit. Dude, I, I just can't force myself to do it. I want to beat it because I'm so far into the, the longest uh, Dragon Quest game. But I just can't get the gumption to fucking beat it, dude. And it pisses me off because I'm so far into it. I might as well just beat the motherfucker now. But I just cannot get the gumption to do it. Uh, Dragon Quest Seven. It's too long. What were you doing on 9-11? Dude, I was at school. During 9-11, I'll never forget that. I walked into the classroom and the TV was set up. And I thought we were going to have like a movie day. You know, you know when you guys were in school, especially in elementary school, you would, uh, you'd walk in and you'd see that TV cart. You know what I mean? And it was like, I saw like the side of the TV cart. And I was like, oh, movie, shot, movie time. You know what I mean? We ain't got to do shit. I think I had forgotten my homework or something too. So I was pretty happy that if we were going to like do something other than that paper. Because I didn't have it anyways. So I seen the movie cart, and I sat down, and the teacher is watching the fucking news. And I'm just like, what is going on? And she's like, we've been attacked. And I was like, what are you talking about? And then all of a sudden, before she could even finish explaining, it pops up on the fucking TV, the uh, Twin Towers. And it was just like, what the fuck, dude? And I think at that point is like right after the second tower was hit or something like that. So it was really, it was crazy. So we basically, in every class, just spent the entire day watching the news. And uh, I remember my mom wanted to come get me from school or something, but she didn't end up doing it. 
and it was just, it's crazy, dude. It's crazy watching movies and stuff now that, like, took place beforehand, or, like, right beforehand, and, you know, snow in the back of your mind. I always think, you know, especially if it takes place in New York, I'm always like, man, it's like one more year, dude, and shit's gonna fucking get crazy. Can you tell us anything about Bootsy? Bootsy? No, I don't know anything about that shit, dude. Bootsy, apparently, by what I heard, Bootsy was fooling around with Mike Matai's girl. That's why he was booted. And apparently, too, I also heard that people were starting to get more interested in Bootsy's Let's Plays and stuff like that than Mike Matai, so Mike Matai started to get jealous. It's sad, dude. Bootsy was fucking better than Mike Matai. I can't stand Mike Matai, dude. It's not even like a jump on the bandwagon thing. I just, I hate that motherfucker, dude. I, I hate what, the, like, you guys know how it is. Like, oh, when you meet someone that just, them opening their mouths is, like, the worst. Like, I cannot handle Mike Matai, dude. He's lame. He's fucking lame. Regardless of how much shit he's done in the background, that's what he is. He's a background guy, okay? He is not... A foreground, in-your-face camera presence. He doesn't have it. He just don't. And it just, it blows my mind. Every time I see him, I'm just like, dude, he's fucking annoying as fuck. I knew a guy like him in high school. He was this tag-along motherfucker. It always used to go with everybody. You know, you'd meet up with your friends, and there's a zap motherfucker. You know what I mean? He's like, hey, man, hey. I wasn't doing nothing. Uh, I've seen you guys over here. I'm going to come sit at your table and shit. It's, that's that motherfucker. Dude, get the fuck out of here, dude. Fucking ridiculous. That's the problem for the longest time. It's 50, $59.99 for a game is too much. But at the same time, you guys got to remember that games were even more expensive back then. Okay? Those that had an N64, like, were probably too young to really realize how much those games were. Okay? They were expensive. Like, fucking Star Fox with the Rubble Pack was like $80. Like, 70, 80 bucks. And that was in 90s money. So that was like in 1998 money. So, like, that stuff was more expensive back then. Yeah, it's 127 fucking dollars. Exchange rate now. Uh, inflation rate. I mean, it's crazy, dude. Yeah, fucking, uh... Final Fantasy VI on this Final Fantasy III when it came out on the Super Nintendo was the same deal. It was like 60, 70 bucks in 1994 money. So these games were expensive as balls back then too. Even more so. But you guys don't really realize it because you were too young. Some of y'all weren't even born. DK64 was fucking expensive, dude. I got that game for my fucking birthday. I looking back on that, man, I wish I could go back in time and really thank my grandpa for that shit, dude. I never, you don't realize as a kid, you know, you're given a gift, you don't realize how much it costs. You don't put two and two together that your grandpa is retired and doesn't have that much money, and you'd ask him for something and he'd always get it for you. And just looking back on it, you just realize, you know. I could not imagine getting fucking Superman 64 for Christmas, bro. I feel so bad for you. God damn, you had to fucking pretend to like that thing. There was a couple times I got games and had to pretend to like them just to not make my parents feel bad. I remember vividly, here's a story. I remember vividly, I made a Christmas list one year, and I asked for San Francisco Rush. To this day, the Rush series is my favorite racing game. I love Rush. You know, regardless of how much it's aged, I love Rush. And I loved the first Rush I had the second Rush game, and I wanted the first one. And I put on my Christmas list, this was like as an extra present, that I wanted San Francisco Rush. And I put that I wanted the N64 version. And I made sure to circle it, arrows, okay, N64 version, because the PS1 version of San Francisco Rush is fucking horrendous, dude. Like, oh my god, it's bad. And I remember this. I'll never fucking forget this, dude. I'll never forget this. Even my brothers remember this. We were in the car, and we were talking about our Christmas list. You know how you were with your brothers, and you're excited about Christmas like a month away. You're like, man, I'm getting this game, and 
and I'm just like, man, I'm getting Rush, and my brother's like, he's like, yeah, but, he's like, screw that PS1 version, that game's fucking bullcrap, and I was like, yeah, I'm like, I'm getting the N64 version, because PS1 version sucks, and I remember vividly, I'll never forget this, my mom and my dad, both looking at each other, like, they turned to each other in the car and looked at each other, and they fucking turned back around, and my mom turned over to me and was just like, well, what's, what's wrong with the PS1 version? And it hit me, right there, that they got me the fucking PS1 version, dude. And I was just like, I felt, I felt bad, but at the same time, I put on the list that I wanted the N64 when I know I did. So I, I looked at her, I'm like, nothing, Mom. I love the PS1 version of Rush. Ah, you know what I mean? So, oh, God, that whole month, dude, I knew I was getting this turd sandwich for fucking Christmas. Oh, I was so upset. I fucking hate Dude, that game is fucking terrible, dude. That's one of the worst ports ever. It's got insanely long load times. It don't play well at all. And, like, it just looks like shit. I'll never forget that. My parents remember that, too. My parents, even I talked to them about that the other day. They're like, yeah, we knew that we fucked up. We got you the wrong one. Fast and the Furious, I, I don't get it. I don't get it, and I get into cars. Okay, so I like cars. But these movies are just so lame. Uh, I've seen... Strangely, the one I've seen the most was Tokyo Drift, because this guy I used to hang around with was obsessed with that movie, so I must have seen that motherfucker like three or four times. And I knew it had the kid from fucking Sling Blade in it, so that was interesting. But that's about as far as that series went for me. Audition? Audition's a boring movie, dude. Boring. I mean, I understand. I like slow burn movies. But that movie is a no burn. Okay? There's no burn. I mean, that movie's like lighting a fuse, and the fuse just fucking burns out. And it's like one of those fuses you can't light. Okay? And that, that movie never even gets started. By the time that movie gets started, you're, you've lost interest. Human Centipede. Dude, Human Centipede. Oh, my God. Dude, I bought the Human Centipede box set here recently because it's, it's starting to get rare. Um, and I've seen it for sale and at a pretty good price. And it's kind of expensive. It was like 30 bucks, And that's kind of expensive for a three-movie set, in my opinion. 30 or 40 bucks, I can't remember. But I, I've never really seen any of them but the first one. So, and everybody kept telling me, oh, my God, the second one, dude, the second one, oh, the second one. And I didn't even think anything about it. I'm just like, oh, y'all are pussies, dude. And this box set, the Blu-ray, had a color version of that movie. I know the, the second one was in black and white, so I was like, man, this would be fucking brutal in fucking uh, color. Dude, dude, the Human Centipede 2 is fucking insane, dude. I mean, that movie's like a borderline fucking snuff film, dude. I mean, I have never seen a movie like that before. I mean, that's got to be the most crazy, batshit, insane movie I've ever seen. It's up there. Especially if you watch it in color. If you guys have not seen <laughs> Human Centipede 2 in color, I mean, I think the main reason he made that in fucking black and white is because it would have been, like, undeliverable in the theaters in color. Like, it is fucking nuts, dude. Like, I mean, it makes... It makes the first movie look like an episode of Barney and Friends. Like, for real. It's brutal. The third movie's unwatchable. Like, I could not even finish the third movie. I, me and my wife had to fast forward through because it, it was so fucking stupid. I hated the third one. But the second one is awesome. But the first two are well-made movies. The first one especially is a well-made movie. I mean, say what you will about Human Centipede. It's a well-made movie. I have seen B-movies. I have seen shit. And, I mean, this guy knows how to direct. You know, like, he's a good director. Do I exercise? No. Never once. <laughs> Never once have I ever exercised. No, I, I can't do that, another part of that. Maybe I'll stream, maybe do regular ROMs or something later, but I can't. I can't, I can't drink that heavily two nights in a row, man. I will be sick. Rum and Coke. Yeah, I'm just not a big, not a big rum guy. I've tried, I've tried every alcohol there is to try. I mean, I'm 32 years old, going on 33. I mean, I've tried everything. Um, chartreuse. I bought a bottle of chartreuse that I, I've been drinking on. That shit's fucking crazy, dude. And first of all, it's expensive as fuck. The only reason I bought it is because I was watching Death Proof, and Quentin Tarantino is just like, like, chartreuse. Liquor's so good, they named a color after it. I 
looked it up, and it's, like, made by monks and all this shit, and, like, it's just nothing, ta I guess nothing tastes like it, and blah, 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 and I went to my liquor store, and they had it, but it was 59 fucking dollars, 60 bucks, but I splurged and got it, me and Ani went in on it, and uh, it's strong as fuck, dude, it's, like, 110 proof fucking shit, I mean, it's so floral, like, it's got a very floral taste to it, it's got that licorice kind of overtone to it, too. That's just not really my style. That anise seed shit that I don't like. I hate black licorice. But, uh, that shit's crazy. Um, how old was I when I had my first sip of alcohol? I was probably, like, 12 or something. My dad gave me a sip of beer, I think. I always thought it tasted good, for the most part, but I don't drink beer anymore, because I, dude, if I'm going to drink, I want to get a buzz. And I don't want to drink 37 fucking beers to get a buzz, pissing my brains out every five fucking minutes, and having a headache. I always get a headache off beer. Like, why? It's fucking dumb, dude. I mean, beer's cheap, but, I mean, look. Like, I can buy a, 50, a, a, a $15 fucking 24-pack of fucking garbage, or I can buy a, a bottle of nice shit and, you know, enjoy myself and move on with my life. Drunken Punk. Yeah, Drunken Punk would drink that cheap fucking garbage shit, too, dude. Beer brand beer. Like that shit you'd always see in movies, you know, they want to pay the royalty, so it just says beer on it. Like, old old episodes of Roseanne, like, Dan would just drink beer. Beer brand beer. That's what fucking Punk used to drink. Uh, dude, when you have a YouTube page this long, and you have such varying opinions as I do on things, I mean, you're just going to make enemies, I mean, that's all there is to it, you know, yeah, people have mental problems that they don't like me, but they still watch my videos, I mean, it's just something that I just never understood, it would be like the equivalent of me going to every brand new RGT video and downvoting it immediately when it comes out, I wouldn't do that, he's not worth a click, okay, he, he ain't worth shit, but for some reason, it's just like I got people that hate me, but they still watch me. So they got like this, it's just, it's weird. You know what I mean? I would think if you don't like me, don't watch me. It's really that simple. But I just, you got, I got fans, I got people that either I've offended, they used to like me, but I've offended them and they don't like me now, but they still want to watch my videos. So... I usually always have, like, two immediate downvotes. Like, one or two people. So, so, who knows who they are? I mean, the mental illnesses that I've seen and dealt with over the years with, with certain people, I, I, I'm surprised I'm still alive. Okay? There are some things that have happened that I haven't even discussed with you guys, and I'm not going to. Okay? Maybe at a later time, I will, but it, it, it gets weird, dude. I mean, let's just say I put up with above and beyond. Before, I, I didn't really experience the amount of crazy that I've experienced until I had this YouTube page. I went to school, yeah, I went to school in a farm school, okay? It's like out in the boonies. We didn't have anybody that you could consider crazy at our school, you know what I mean? It was a uh, very, you know, I didn't experience that kind of stuff. You know, I've, I've knew, I knew weird people, but it wasn't until I graduated that I started working jobs, started doing things, that I really seen what true crazy is. You know what I mean? You might say maybe it's, you know, some of it, some of, some of it can be said, considered autism, but I have friends that with autism and they're super cool. There are different levels that go beyond that, okay? There are levels that people get obsessed, okay? People get obsessed with you to where it's scary, you know what I mean? I mean, people get your phone number. You don't know how they got your phone number. People get your phone number. They will call you, okay? People get your parents' phone number and call them, okay? And... You know, you get mail, weird shit, you know, packages. It's, just, it's certain things, you know what I mean? Like, I've told Ani a long time ago, and I'll tell everybody here, that if I, if I,
if I was to ever get, if I was to ever get swatted, nobody would ever know about it. Okay. Let's say I'm playing something on here. Okay. Let's say I'm playing like a game or something, and I hear some commotion outside. I'm gonna stop the stream. I'm gonna handle that business. I'm gonna come back here, and nobody's ever gonna know it's gonna happen. Because I'm not gonna give anybody the satisfaction of knowing that they got me or that they, that affected me in any way. And I told Ani that, okay? If I ever get a beating on the door or anything, the stream's gonna be stopped, I'm gonna handle it, it's gonna be done, and I'm gonna come back like nothing happened. The reason why a lot of people do this stuff is for the reactions, okay? They want you to react, okay? Something happened not too long ago that I know that somebody wanted a reaction from me about it, but they're not getting it. And I did not even acknowledge it. Okay? That's how you deal with this stuff. When you deal with it in that way, you know, I feel like that's why a lot of my haters have gone elsewhere because I don't acknowledge it. You, you, when, you, when you acknowledge it and you throw a big hissy fit about it, like Wings of Redemption, that's why they continue doing it. Okay, you gotta let that shit go. What's my favorite point and click adventure game? Oh, I like Legend of Kyrandia. Legend of Kyrandia is my jam. Your brony videos are my favorite. They were so funny. Even my, even my stingy friends. <laughs> yeah, those turned out really good. It's uh, it's weird when you make a video. Uh, like I said, I'm not good at editing. I'm not good at that stuff. So. My talking and my stories and my stuff like that has to elevate my videos beyond good editing. A lot of people like to depend on their editing skills, and that's fine. You know, do what you think. But I can't edit worth a fuck. So my shit just has to be funny off the bat. Okay, it has to be something there that's funny. And that's the way I did my videos back then. And I remember making those Brony videos and watching them. That The one, the, the, the main Brony video that everybody remembers. And I remember just, I was laughing. I was just losing it. I brought my parents in. They were laughing their asses off. I know I have something when I can make my dad laugh. Okay? Nothing makes my dad laugh. Nothing. Okay? Nothing. A fucking dude, a, a, a midget could fall down the stairs. Okay? And, and it would be like the funniest thing ever. Like the funniest thing you've ever seen. You know what I mean? Could, could happen right in front of my dad. Okay? And he would not laugh. I've seen this man. He will sit through the funniest movie ever, and he will not even crack a smile, okay? It doesn't matter. It doesn't go fuck, okay? But I'm one of the few people that can make my dad laugh. And the Brony video, I remember, made my dad laugh. Or Acts 52 made my dad laugh. Um, the uh, Pipple video that I made made my dad laugh really hard. So that's kind of the test. I'll let my dad watch it. My mom watch it, and they'll think it's funny, and I'm like, well, it must be funny. Do I think the Illuminati exist? I don't know, man. When it comes to conspiracy theory stuff, I feel like it's just kind of just blind, random luck when certain things actually end up painting out to anything. And I refuse, like, I feel like people get caught up in that shit, like, too much. It'll make you go crazy. Like, it'll make you go crazy. Like, if you sit and you think everything is a conspiracy, I mean, it'll make you go nuts after a while. I know a guy that's like that. Everything's a fucking conspiracy, man. Okay? This motherfucker, you know, he'll go to fucking Taco Bell, dude, and he'll, his order will be wrong, and he'll think it's a fucking conspiracy. Like, Taco Bell is plotting against this motherfucker, dude. Okay? Like, he, he will just swear up and down, man. Okay, I order, I order fucking hard tacos. They give me soft tacos, man. The fucking Illuminati, dude. They do this every time, bro. Okay, look at the look at the way this lettuce is positioned on my soft taco, dude. It looks exactly like that pyramid with the eye on it, dude. These motherfuckers, fuck them, dude. Okay, everything's a fucking conspiracy, dude. Not everything is a conspiracy. That's what I tell people. Not everything's a conspiracy. It's not. You know, some things are. Okay? Some things, there's something going on. There's something going on at Area 51. Something. I mean, that's just a fact. Okay? If it wasn't a fact, you wouldn't have fences around the fucker 20 miles away from where the actual base is. That's why when they were doing this Area 51 thing and they're talking about running into it, okay, you know you're not because you're going to have to run 20 fucking miles to even get to the base after you get past the fucking fences. 
okay? That shit's so fucking heavily guarded, there you have no chance. So there's something going on there, okay? Is it aliens? Is it? I don't fucking know. Nobody knows. You can make conspiracy theories for days. You're not ever gonna know unless they let you know, okay? There's a reason why it's so heavily fucking guarded. You can Naruto run all fucking day into that bitch, even if you get past the gates, okay? And you somehow get past the Rottweilers that's going to be chasing your ass down, and you get past the fucking Jeep that's going to be chasing you down, okay? You're not going to ever make it because it's like 20 miles in. Stupid. The whole thing was a waste of time. But there's something going on there, but who knows what is going on? Same thing with like 9-11. Do I think that the whole thing was a conspiracy? I don't know. Do I think that things happened on that day that don't make any sense? Yes. Okay? You can get into the jet fuel burns and rip -de -der and the heat of this and all oh, this girder was cut with a laser beam or some other bullshit. I don't fucking know. I don't know. Nobody's going to know. Okay? But there are things that didn't make sense on that day and that's just a fact. Okay? The whole Pentagon thing didn't make no sense. Doesn't make any sense that there's no fucking video footage of that at all. Okay? It doesn't make sense that buildings fell down around the fucking Twin Towers when they weren't even hit with a plane. There are just certain things that didn't make sense. But it doesn't mean that it's a, it's a conspiracy. It just means that maybe shady. I would say it's shady. There's some shadiness going on. You know? So nobody knows. You're, I mean, you're never going to know unless somebody comes out with some information or somebody gets caught or something like that. Until then, it's all speculation. I mean, I refuse to speculate about something forever, okay? Because you're never... I mean, people have been speculating about Area 51 since the fucking 50s. So it's just like... I mean, like fucking 70 years of fucking speculating, dude. I mean, it's just nonsense. You know? And even then, there can be an explanation for the building that fell down that didn't get hit. It's just... People need this stuff, okay? In the same way... That people need religion in order to get through the day there are some people that need conspiracy theories and need something to latch on to to be able to get through the day also okay and that's fine but you know it doesn't mean everything is a conspiracy it just doesn't you know like people are, are given fucking George W. Bush a whole lot of fucking credit that he could possibly have anything to do with any of that shit. That motherfucker was so goddamn retarded, I'm surprised he could even dress himself. Okay? Motherfucker, please, dude. This motherfucker's reading a children's book while it was happening. I'm surprised he, he probably had that thing upside down, dude. We gotta go back and rewatch the footage. Okay? He probably can't even read, dude. That motherfucker, every time he opened his mouth, he couldn't even speak in complete sentences, dude. I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, not everything is a fucking conspiracy, dude. But certain things are. Certain things aren't. We're never going to know. So that, I think that's my point, is that I'm just not going to sit here and dwell on this stuff like some people do. Because it's just, to me, it's just a waste of time. Anything can be considered a fucking conspiracy, okay? Anything. If you, if you try to make it into one, it can be one. You know, two and a half hours. I did not think I was going to be doing this this long. <laughs> I thought for sure this would be like an hour thing. You guys would get bored. But, man, I have retained 212 people in this motherfucker for a long time. So that's impressive. Awesome, guys. Thanks for joining me. I'll try to stream later. If not, I'll stream tomorrow. All right. Peace, guys. See you.